This is the seventh video in the video series of Orbital Mechanics of Python. This one I'm going to be talking about two-line element sets, or TLEs. So what they are is a uh, universal form describing orbital parameters. Just a standard that's been made that put your um, orbital parameters in this way, and then everyone can read them. Um, you can find them everywhere. Space tracks, less track, heavens above. Heavens above is the one I used in the last video. Um, I'm just going to show you all these three, uh, just so you can get an idea of what, what, what they are. So spacetrack.org, I believe, is run by the U.S. Air Force. Um, and you just have basically any TLE you could ever want. You have to make an account, but it, it's no big deal. You can take like one minute. Um, they have 136 million TLEs in their database. So obviously they have everything covered. And they update daily. Um, updated today, obviously, and more than once daily. Um, and they also have a section where they describe what the format is. So here's an example of the ISS, which I showed in the last video as well. Um, and then they just go through describing, it goes by line and then columns. So each column or sets of columns has their own um, values to them. This is the standard for doing that. I'll just go ahead and post the link um, just so you can see um, what it is. Um, so let's track is another one. It's pretty useful. Um, it looks like this and you can see the last 30 days launches. So very recent stuff here that was launched. Um, and then space stations, again, here's ISS. Um, ISS is everywhere, obviously, we know where it is. Um, and then one thing that I found, so this is Heavens Above, the one that I used last time, and then they have a cool ISS interactive 3D visualization. So there you go, you can see the ISS, you can see where it is, it's a bit past New Zealand there, going, heading towards uh, North America, Central America there. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's a pretty cool thing. You can kind of just see where the ISS is at any time. No fun with that. And then, yep, yeah, so I think from there I'll just get into the software. Um, yeah, so again, I didn't want to, oh, oopsies, previous attempt at the video. Um, I didn't want to uh, actually write out the file um, in real time, or not the file, the function in real time, just because it'd be pretty boring again. Um, what I, did, what I did want to do is kind of just walk through it with an example. Um, here we can go space station again, because why not? Um, with an example alongside, just because it's a lot of just um, string parsing, which is kind of a nuisance. But again, once you have it just written once, it's okay. You can just use it. Um, so first, uh, I put everyone in its own file. So here I have it as... Here, it's just a, a file that is called iss.txt. I just made it um, and you can use it. Um, I like to put them in files just so I can separate them by file. Um, just my personal preference. Um, so you read the file, you read it by lines. Um, so it's three lines. Um, strip uh, just gets rid of the new line character and then split. Um, when it doesn't have any arguments, it will split a string by spaces. So you can see that there's a space, there's a space. It'll split the, it'll split the string by spaces um, so you can just have these values. Um, so the first value that you want to grab is epic, um, which is, so line one, three, so zero, one, two, three is this. So what this is, is 19 is the year, 220 is the day of the year, so it's 220th day of the year, fun fact. Um, and from that, here's a calc epic little function that I have. So you add the 20 because it's 2019. It just says 19, but it's 2019. Um, day of year, yeah, it's just kind of this algorithm that you have to do. Um, date time, so you can just import date time. Um, built in Python is good with, you can guess date and time, and then it counts for like leap seconds and time zones and um, leap days, so it's really good to use. Um, so you have your date time. Here I define. Um, whatever year it is, which is 2019, but I'm making this robust so it can, in 2020 it'll work. And then the first day of the year, or first day of the month, first day of the year, or month, or day, I'm not sure which one, because they're both one. So January 1st of whatever year, and you're gonna add to that the day of the year, which you are given by that. And then you can get these values from that. So date.month, date.day, and then you return all that. Um, it's not actually necessary. Um, you can get the date if you want, if you're interested in that. I just wanted to show. <laughs> Um, what's going on um, and then we get to the actual orbital parameters here um, so what we have is your inclination is going to be on line two two so line two zero one two this is your inclination next one is your right ascension or ascending node I talked about these in the last video um, eccentricity 
I, I wrote this comment a long time ago, and it's true. It's pretty janky, but this, it works. So they have the eccentricity without the zero point in front of it. Um, so you just add as a string the zero point, add that, and then make it a float. Um, yeah, it is janky. It's still janky. I really like that I put that comment there a long time ago. Um, argument of perigee is the next one. Or, yeah, perigee, because it actually only makes TLEs for Earth uh, orbiting satellites. So, yeah. And then mean anomaly, which I talked about in the previous video, is uh, 273. Am I there? Yeah, 273. Um, and I'll show you, we're going to go from mean anomaly to true anomaly if you get to all the older elements. And then mean motion is however many revolutions per day that uh, the ISS has, which is 15.51, because it goes around the Earth every 90 minutes. So you can just do some quick math, or roughly every 90 minutes. So that all makes sense. Um, so here, oh, and then from the from the mean motion, so there's revolutions per day, you can calculate this period by going one over mean motion and then do it by seconds. And then semi major axis this is just an equation. Um, if you have the period, you have the mu value, you can find the semi major axis. If that, that's more of a geometry problem. Maybe I'll post a link to that one. Again, just geometry. And then, oh, actually, I didn't realize in the last video, but this is where you use that Newton, Newton's method for finding eccentric anomalies um, in that function. So I showed the this function before. But this time we have mean anomaly and eccentricity, and we're going to use Newton's method to solve. Um, if I can get rid of that. Uh, where's the ECC? There it is. So this time we're going to use Newton's method because last time we had a true anomaly and eccentricity, and it's just a straightforward equation to get what your um, eccentric anomaly is. But here you have to use Newton's method, which I will show what that is. It's a numerical method because you can't solve this equation. Um, uh, kind of algebraically, I forget the word right now, but like algebraic, you can't solve it on paper. You have to do it numerically. Um, so actually, I found this GIF. There's actually a really good representation of how to, of how Newton's method works. Um, so you just take a random point, you find the slope of the line, you find where it intersects um, the y equals zero, and then you keep going through. So first you start off at a really far guess, you start and you go to this guess, get the slope, guess here, Go to the line, get the slope, guess here, and then go to the line again, get the slope, and then guess here, and then numerically you're going to converge. Um, you can diverge. Um, this isn't a perfect method, but for these cases, you usually don't diverge. You usually converge to whatever point you want, and that solves for the eccentric anomaly. Um, this is kind of like the the for loop uh, where I put an arbor, as, as I said here. Actually, I wrote this probably like two or three years ago, so I don't know. I mean, it just works, so I don't, again, I don't look at it anymore, but it's an arbitrary number of steps, so if you go back uh, past 200 steps, you probably diverge, um, and then you have some tolerance um, that you say if, basically, if you get to zero within one to, or 10 to the power of negative eight, then you're good. We're going to just go ahead and say that the eccentric anomaly is solved, um, return that value. Um, so that's just another method of finding eccentric anomaly, and you have to use an iterative method. You don't have to use Newton. Uh, this method precisely, but is a good method, and that's just what I went with. Uh, okay, so then we can go back to so yeah, so that's done. Yeah, we solve for ECC and then true anomaly. Here's another one. Um, so you can find the true anomaly for the eccentric anomaly, which we just calculated there, and then the eccentricity, and that's just a straightforward equation. Kind of just plug it in, and there it is. Um, not too complicated, and then the magnitude of the R vector. Oh, which I actually took out of here, so I really don't need because it's more important that we have the semi major axis, not the magnitude of the R vector. Um, and you return them in the same order that we had for cos RV, uh, just so it's convenient. Return those, and then you're good to go. And then return the date. Oh, and one thing I wanted to add is I remembered because I had this date value um, date because it's an extra parameter that I returned. Oh, here it is. Um, from this uh, Telia Coes. So in case you're curious in the date, I'll just return it, sure, it doesn't matter. Um, and then in here, I wanted to add a thing that's true, because most of the times when you pass in an argument, um, you're gonna pass it in degrees, because if you're making just classical orbital elements and wanna see what they look like, they're gonna be in degrees, because you are making them a human. Um, but if not, because if you're gonna pass in uh, from here, they're in uh, radians uh, from this equation. Um, so you're going to want to just pass them in as radians. 
which actually they don't necessarily have to be. I can make these degrees because this is basically the only time you see, but whatever. Maybe I'll just fix that. Um, so then from that, so you have the degrees, degrees, and we can get to the main function. Um, okay, so I just wrote out one example because I have iss.txt already in here. Or let's just say like initiate orbit. Let's just say ISS, whatever. Oh, and another thing, um, I noticed that every time I use orbit propagator, the very next thing after I initialize it like this, I say propagate orbit. I haven't found a case where I don't do that, so I just went ahead and just put it in the init function. So once it runs through all this, it is gonna run through the propagate orbit, which it already has all the variables that it needs to go ahead and go through with it. So might as well just do it. And then again, layer of abstraction, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, you can just call it there and you can plot it. So that was just to make sure that all my functions work. Um, so I'm just gonna grab a few more examples. Uh, just grab some random ones, I guess. Um, uh, let's see here. Why don't we do maybe an old one or something? Oh, some debris, because oral debris is a pretty big problem. So I'll do this one. Um, so copy, and then I can do this. Okay, one quick thing that I actually did want to show. Um, when you're in the command prompt, um, is very different from a Linux terminal. Um, but I don't know if you noticed, but I said cat. I said cat in earlier, but that doesn't actually work in the command prompt. So what I did is cat, again, I'm using cat, but um, if you're familiar with the uh, Linux commands, you'll know what cat means. Um, uh, but you can make this alias.cmd file in your main um, folder and you can make a bunch of aliases um, where an alias is you type one thing and it means another. So in Linux, so I have this whole section for Linux commands. So ls means ls in um, the command prompt means dir or ls in Linux means dir in the command prompt um, for Windows. Um, so I just have it that way. Um, cat, as I see here, um, type is the equivalent. Um, you can see all these and I just have a few just other things um, wandering around here. But anyways, this is kind of like a fun thing you can do just to kind of pretend that your Windows um, command prompt you can use as a Linux terminal, which you can't because there's a lot of limitations. But anyways, um, and then, so I just wanted to show that real quick in case anyone wonders how I can use cat um, in this uh thing and another one i had in there is notepad and then just say and what was the name of this one uh cosmos 2251 notepad cosmos 2251.txt so notepad i made um a shortcut i don't know if you saw earlier but it can just open up notepad um, to create this file paste save and i'll just do one more for good measure let's just get something else um, something that was launched recently, so last three day launches. Let's do, oh, Dragon CRS 18. Oh, that must be Dragon. Maybe it's still up with the ISS. I'm not sure what it is right now. Progress MS 12, because again, why not? Um, so then Notepad, what did I say it was again? Uh, progress MS 12, progress .txt. Yes, paste have that and then you can just plug them in so iss and then we have cosmos let's name op1 equals op t dot tle to pose that's cosmos 2251.txt t span dt again the t span is arbitrary um, codes equals true because I'm passing in codes and degrees equals false because they're rating, which I think I'm going to change actually. But I won't do it in this video, I'll just make it all degrees. And then I'm just going to copy and paste because it's all the same thing. For progress, and then just progress.txt. And then again, classic plot and rt.plot in orbits. Um, op zero dot rs op one dot rs op two dot rs labels um, iss again 
Another Isaac example. Cosmos. Progress. Show plot equals true. I'll move this over. Let's see what type of bugs we're working with. But that's pretty much. Oh, and one more thing. Totally forgot about this. Um, in tools.py, I had an over propagator class, dark background. I actually prefer this a lot more than regular background. And that's the thing I was looking for in the last video and I couldn't find it, but it was there. I kind of just missed it in a moment. Um, yeah. Deg, init. Oh, because I forgot to put it in, obviously. So deg equals true. Oh, oh, it's not saved. There we go. Cos, TLE to cos. Let's see. Line 22. Oh, that's why. I put the parentheses in the wrong place. So TLE to cos has to go there. And then, no. Oh, that's what I did. And then a copy and paste it went through. You guys probably saw it and said this guy. What's he doing? OB2 is not defined. Oh, because it's. You also probably saw that and was like, what's this guy doing? There we go. So these are all um, obviously Leo. Oh wow, those colors are terrible. I can't tell the difference. So I'm gonna turn that off for a second. I'll figure out why that's the case. Oh, it's not in here. It's an over propagator. What? Oh yeah, whenever you initialize it, it's everywhere. Here we go. So we have Cosmos is there. Oh, looks like the ISS and Progress are pretty close to each other. Um, actually, this may seem like they're close to each other, but that might not be the case because these are large values, like the radius of the Earth is really large. Um, so there they are. The ISS has a bubble where you can't be within it, just in case of, um, because there's astronauts there. So you have to be careful to stay away from it in case of um, collisions, but yeah. There they are. Turns out Cosmos and ISS, or Progress and ISS have some similar orbits. So that's about it on this video. Um, just wanted to show the TLEs and how to use them. And, yep. And so for the next video, I'm thinking that I'm gonna go ahead and do orbital perturbations, which um, in all of these, is this still open? In all of these, um, I've assumed that there are no external forces acting upon these. Um, which is fine for a very small time span, but in reality, there's always gonna be perturbations on your orbits. Anything from aerodynamic drag um, to the J2 perturbation, to magnetic, um, even uh, to the third body of the moon or the sun uh, gravity acting on you. Um, so there's a million different things that can act on your orbit that will make a change. Um, that's what I'll cover next and go ahead and um, put it into the software. So that's it for this video. Again, let me know. Anything too slow, too fast, anything you want to see, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.